So now we've got an end date for our royal complex, but we still haven't quite proved it was a palace. Alex and Mick, though, can now attribute a certain majesty to the site, thanks to their detective work. Yeah. Well, what I've actually found is a reference here in an account from 1348. Right. Okay, and it, it, it actually describes repair work and new builds up there to all sorts of chambers, yeah. and all sorts yeah. of things going on, stables as well. It also mentions the Great Gates. Okay, so we've also got a gatehouse. So a gatehouse somewhere in that, that stretch there. And, and funnily enough, this building here in the 18th century was the Gate Inn. <laughs> right. What about this big lake down the bottom here? Unfortunately, I think all we've got left, left of this little pond is that tiny little dip down there's, there. There's this bit in front of us. But I mean, this would have been a, a monumental feature in front of the, the palace site, wouldn't it? And certainly from where we're sitting, Away to your left is this great body of water, yep. and the palace is up on the hill. It will look impressive anyway, but a lot of the time it will be reflected in the water as well. Medieval hunting sites mean feasting, and great rituals were attached to the butchery of deer, notably the unmaking, in which the dead animal was systematically divided up. Marianne's getting her hands dirty to find out which of the hunters got the lion's share of the venison. So now we've gutted and skinned it, what do we do next? Uh, well, we've got to uh, uh, quarter it up. It's called the unmaking of the deer. The whole thing is called the unmaking of the deer. Various cuts would go to various people. The pelvis goes back to the kill site as an offering to the uh, uh, corbies or crows. That's pretty ritualistic. It sounds yeah, pagan. Very much so, very much so, yeah. But it was just something they did, it's something they carried on doing. The, uh, the left foreleg would go to the huntsman, the forester. The right one would usually go to his assistant. The haunches, these are the prized possessions. This is what ends up on this. the noble's table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Let's get it on the barbie. But this act of preparation can leave clues for archaeologists. So what do the bones we've found on our side tell us? We've got, you know, the normal sorts of things that I'd be expecting from a medieval site. We've got cattle, sheep, pig. Uh, even bits of, of horse, there are some nice horse teeth in here. Mm. But what we also have is quite a lot of deer. The really interesting thing about deer in the medieval period is that there, there are all of these unmaking rituals, which I think you've already heard about. Of course. And uh, the bones that we've got really do conform to those. This is a foot bone, it's from the right-hand side of the body. Here's another one, also from the right-hand side. This here is an astragalus, part of the ankle bone, from the right. The humerus here is from the right-hand side of the body, as is this scapula here. The left-hand side of deer would go off to the parker or the forester as his fee for sort of supporting the hunt. The right-hand side would go to the best hunter. Now, normally, we tend to find these uh, right-hand sides of the shoulders found on village sites, because most of the hunters were living in villages. To find them on an elite site is quite unusual, but I think because it's a, a royal uh, site, it is sort of suggesting that the king is the best hunter, <laughs> and they're all here. You don't normally find That's these brilliant. parts on, on high-status sites. So the Mardi King had to be the best hunter as well? It would look that way. Fantastic. Yeah. Even if we haven't got the haunch bone, which would mean we were digging under the king's table, has Phil now found the link that will confirm the site as King John's palace? Phil, you've done very well in such a short time. Absolutely. But the big question is, have you found our chapel? Yeah, I reckon we have, Tony. I mean, what we've actually found is this boulder-filled foundation trench, and it's bang on line where, where the geophysics said it would. It goes literally right through the middle of our trench. So that's what the geophys was picking up, although those yeah. big black lines were these boulders? Absolutely. What they've done is they've dug this massive trench over a metre deep, and I think to stabilise it in the sand around here, they've poured in a load of cobbles, yeah. and, and there are bits of broken stonework in amongst it as well, literally to form a firm base to put the chapel on on the top. We've got some dating evidence for it. Uh, the latest evidence we've got is about 13th century. It's a little bit later than we hoped, isn't it? This is more like Henry III. Well, yes, but it's not the first stone-built building on the site, because if you can see just where Tracy is, look, you can see there's that orange-coloured rubble. That is demolition rubble of a stone-built building, and the foundation trench of our chapel cuts through that. 
this is great news. Something was obviously knocked down to make way for a 13th century chapel built on the same spot. Could it possibly have been an earlier chapel, the Chapel of King John? The proof may have turned up in the demolition rubble of that building. We've got this rather nice stone carving. It's, it's of a hand, and you can see here, here's the thumb, and on this side, the fingers. They're all rather joined together. But look, they're probably part of a, a window moulding or something yeah. like that, and it's this hand that is, that is grasping this, this column. It's, it's, it's a lovely piece of architecture. And just the sort of thing you'd get in an ecclesiastical building like a chapel. Must be 13th century or earlier. So yeah. that could be from the time of King John. King John may well have seen this hand, yeah. <laughs> By the skin of our teeth, gentlemen, I think we've made it. Mm. Our host and landowner, Mickey Bradley, can now rest assured that this site will be preserved for posterity. Mickey, I've had a long chat with the rest of the team and they're pretty convinced that we've got so much evidence now that your ruin will be properly scheduled and it will be saved for the nation. Tony, thank you so much. We worked so hard for this time and Time Team have made it, has made that happen. I'm glad thank we've you made your much. day. It's rather good, isn't it? We started out with King John's Palace, and after three really quite difficult days, we've also found King John's Chapel. Anyone fancy a deer burger? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Phil, you have the first one. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs>